Welcome to lesson 3G, the Navier-Stokes equation. In this lesson, we'll plug in the constitutive equation for a Newtonian fluid into Cauchy's equation to generate the famous Navier-Stokes equation. We'll do this for compressible flow, but then show the incompressible version. At the end, we'll summarize both the integral and differential equations for mass and momentum in Cartesian and cylindrical coordinates. The previous lesson was fairly long because we generated this constitutive equation. Now all we have to do is plug this into Cauchy's equation. The first two terms are the same, but notice that this term involves a derivative of Tij, the stress tensor. We'll do the pressure term first, then the term with the viscosity, and finally the term with the second coefficient of viscosity, lambda. Notice that we kept mu and lambda inside the derivatives, since in general, these fluid properties can be functions of space and time. But let's examine this term. As we've argued before, this is non-zero only when i equal j. So this term contracts to minus del p del xi. Similarly, this last term is non-zero only when i equal j. So this contracts to del del xi, lambda, del um del xm. We rewrite the equation as rho du ui dt, keeping in mind that this is a material derivative, and fluid mechanicians like to put the pressure term first. So on the right we have minus del p del xi, plus the gravity term rho gi, plus the viscous term which remains the same, and finally this last term. This equation is the compressible Navier-Stokes equation, which is valid for any Newtonian fluid. Once we had our constitutive equation, derivation of the Navier-Stokes equation was fairly straightforward. Yeah, that is the shortest derivation I've seen since 1951. Thanks, Albert. Nice to see you again. Ah. Uh -huh. This is the general compressible form. For incompressible flow, we assume that rho is approximately constant, mu is approximately constant, and del um del xm is zero which is the incompressible form of the continuity equation. Since this appears here, the term with lambda will drop out. And since mu is a constant, it can come outside the derivative. So this equation becomes rho du i dt is minus del p del xi plus rho gi plus mu. And then I'll leave it for an exercise for you to show that this reduces to del squared u i del xj del xj. Notice the free index i in each term so that this is a vector equation as it has to be. This is the incompressible Navier-Stokes equation. This will be our workhorse equation throughout this course, although we'll occasionally return to the compressible form. Most of the stuff we do from now on is incompressible. Finally, I summarize both the integral and differential forms of the equations of motion. Here's the integral and differential form for conservation of mass in tensor notation and the linear momentum equation also in tensor notation. Note that we have both the conservative form and the non-conservative form, which we called Cauchy's equation. We use this one to generate the Navier-Stokes equation, although you could do a similar thing with the conservative form. The constitutive equation for a Newtonian fluid is given here, and then we just derived both the compressible and incompressible Navier-Stokes equation, again in tensor notation. To put these into computational fluid dynamics code, or to solve some of the simple flows, we often need to write out the components. I'll use Cartesian coordinates x, y, z, and u, v, w. These are the vector forms of conservation of mass and the Navier-Stokes equation. And in Cartesian coordinates, we get this for the continuity equation. And the Navier-Stokes equation has three components, one for u, one for v, and one for w. I also give some other useful equations, like the Laplacian, the u dot del term, and the vorticity components. I then do the same thing in cylindrical coordinates, r theta z, and u r u theta u z as the velocity components corresponding to these. Again, continuity equation, and the three components of the Navier-Stokes equation for u r u theta and u z. Notice some of these extra terms, like u theta squared over r, or u r u theta over r, etc. These occur because when you move in the theta direction, you also change the direction of radius r. That's what leads to these extra terms. Here's my other useful equations as well, Laplacian u dot del, and the three components of vorticity. I also note that if you plug this Laplacian into the theta component of the Navier-Stokes equation, 
you can rewrite the viscous terms as this string of terms. This is just an alternate form of the theta component of the Navier-Stokes equation. Depending on the flow you're trying to solve for, you may want to use this form or this form. I like to say use whichever one is easier. If you want to download all these equations, in the YouTube description for each of these videos, I give a link to an Excel spreadsheet that has the annotated versions of all of these lessons. As I promised, this is a very short video, so that's all there is to it. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.